Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our December 12, 2018 Select Board meeting. Um, we welcome you all. I'd just like to take a moment at the beginning of the meeting just for a moment of silence for the firefighter from Worcester that passed this past week, uh, Christopher Roy. So we certainly are thinking of his family and his family both at home and who he works with and the city of Worcester. So certainly just a moment. agenda, uh, which are the warrants PR 1919, PR 1920, PR 1921, PR 1922, PR 1920, AP 1920, AP 18th of 2018. I have a motion. September 18th. September 18th. September 18th. September 18th. What did I say? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> September 18th. It was a uh, few months ago. <laughs> motion to approve. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Okay. Any public comments this evening? Uh, the 110 grill. 110 grill. Okay. All right, that will be coming up. One thing I, well, go ahead. Just um, something, uh, kind of a comment is uh, I was reading the paper on Tuesday, I believe, and uh, about the family bike share program, mm -hmm. and Hadley was called out in there as maybe being able to participate in that program, which would be maybe putting in a couple stations of the bikes along the bike path or something. Mm -hmm. And I was just wondering. Uh, I'd be willing to contact Wayne Biden in Northampton and try to just get some details about what that might look like, how much it might cost, what we could maybe do to participate in that Valley Bike Share program. I don't know what you guys think about that, taking okay. that on. It depends on cost. That, I, that's what I mean, like, yeah. But we were never, I, what you think about looking yeah, into well, it. We were never when approached. When we were when never no, approached. We have, David and I have actually met with them twice. You have, okay. Yeah. So maybe there's already been. So, but it was very preliminary and it wasn't ready for prime time to come to that. Last year? Uh, no, this year actually, six, right? Six months ago. Yeah. Uh, so, Chris. During the summer, Chris, Chris Curtis. Oh, thank you. Nice fellow. Nice of you to share that with us. Thank you. Well, well we. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I was saying. We wasn't really ready for prime time because we didn't have any cost information. So, he. What about had, September 18th? We still don't have any cost <laughs> estimation. <laughs> Well, so what it would cost us. Yeah. So do you want the update? Sure. Hey, go for it. If you have something. Okay. It must be an investment because I see South Hadley did it in front of their police station and they did it on their village commons. Go by and see. Sure, go for it now. So uh, Chris Curtis approached the town. He actually, he made contact with me because he um, was working in Amherst and somebody in Amherst suggested you know, contacting somebody on the select board. So when he made contact with me, I forwarded it to David, um, and he was just looking for a preliminary meeting to see if we would be interested at all. So this was a while back. Um, David and I had a conversation with him. He really didn't have much information at the time other than, you know, what do you think? Would Hadley be interested? And David and I said, well, you know, we have to go through the select board, but Sure, you know, it seems to make a lot of sense because we were seeing the uh, stations pop up. At that point, they were just being installed in Northampton and the like. So he said that he would then follow up with us now that he knew we were going to talk. And a couple of months back, as David said, we met with him. And at that point, he had a brochure. He had information saying that the um, station itself actually is manufactured in Canada, David, right? I've lost track of that detail. Yeah, so, so it's actually a Canadian manufacturer, um, but that in order to participate, what other towns were doing was they were getting sponsors um, because there absolutely is a cost. Mm -hmm. And we would need to figure out a way to make it happen. Um, 
I think East Hampton had just indicated interest at that point. He was working with the new mayor of East Hampton, and uh, Nicole LaChapelle was working on an agreement with him. And, you know, we said, you know, again, it seemed like something that we would be interested in. Of course, it was going to come down to cost, and we needed to figure out how to make that happen, and did he expect us to approach area businesses, or how was that all going to work? Um, so, again, yeah, it, it was a pleasant meeting, um, but the, that wasn't the details, so yeah. we hadn't taken it that one step further. So he just wanted to know if it was okay that he indicate that Hadley might be interested, okay. and we said might, yes, knowing it had to come back to the full board, um, and that the intent was to have further conversation. So. Okay. So, so that, from my standpoint, am I, am I missing anything, or is that what you were yeah, thinking? Yeah, you have more than I do. Okay. I, yeah. I haven't worked on this project for months. Yeah. No. So, to I that end. At the top of the list, has it? <laughs> no, no, it's not something. At the top. No, but it's something they have to apply for grants yeah. and things yeah. like that. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, I, I'm more than happy if that's something you're keenly yeah, interested in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm interested in that kind of stuff. I think. Sure. You know, there's enough businesses in Hadley that would be willing to sponsor something like that. So, mm -hmm. I mean. Having something like that, the mall, Whole Foods, you know, all that would be great. So they were talking um, about the mall, and uh, in front of the library. And David and I had mentioned at that point we were hopeful. I know I've <laughs> seen the bikes. Get a new library and senior center. I've seen the bikes like outside of the quarters mm -hmm. on their bike rack, yeah. and actually yeah. they complained to me at the quarters because they're like, yeah, they just leave these bikes here, and you know, then they have to come pick them up. But it would be great if there was a station around. Right. I think for <coughs> businesses as well. So. Yeah, but they said the mall definitely was um, a high high impact location. Yeah. Maybe okay. Like, so maybe quarters would be interested. In yeah. Maybe yeah. maybe if you can forward me the email and then I'll follow they up. They do with have them. bike rentals at the other end of the quarters in that building there. People come and take oh, that's bikes from there. A DCR program for right. people for maybe access. Maybe DCR would like maybe to DC, Yeah, DCR they would like be like interested in too. Because they have the bikes yeah. there already. Yeah, so, so I think there's a lot of options there. Options so. for them to look at. Okay, yeah, yeah. so I look forward to okay. all the contact info I have. Yeah, and then I can keep you guys updated. That'd be great. Uh, is CPA funding for this, perhaps? If they were recreational portion? Possibly. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can talk to Andy about it. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. I know their applications are coming up. We mm -hmm. found out today, the end of December for yeah. next year. But I know Might we'll be, be ready to for fit that. that in. <laughs> right. Well, he did say even if you didn't think you could have the application for December 31st, please contact him. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll give him a and call. even though you might initiate it with CPA money, then who would continue to pay for it? Mm -hmm. And that's the what details of what are we, what yeah. are we, yeah. And Is it something that we have to continuously pay? And the maintenance, Is it something that's the maintenance falls to the town. So there's an initial okay. equipment. Just, just what we need right now. Yeah. Great. More more things, more in our budget. Sorry for being a negative. <laughs> it's okay. but we have a lot on our plate right now. Yeah. Um, grants would be nice. Yeah. See what we can do. We de can't make any decisions until we know what, what we're making. That's right very on. true. Okay. So, David, you want, you've got about seven minutes. You want to do something? <laughs> <laughs> Keeping you on track. We've okay. got a 7.15 appointment, right, well, so. We, uh, we, you know, we had a big update last uh, week, so nothing much has changed. Uh, one of the things that we have been working on a lot, uh, and this is work that's fallen to Dan Zadonik in the Sessions Office primarily, uh, is the recap sheet for FY 2019. Apparently, the Department of Revenue has made some changes in the way that we declare the uh, Enterprise Fund uh, revenues and expenses, uh, a change that we did not anticipate at the, uh, at the uh, spring town, fall town meeting, and so we might have changed our vote a little bit in order to make the accounting a little bit more easy. We think we've found a workaround so that we can get everything submitted this week. Um, so I don't think we have to worry about uh, setting the tax rate uh, as of this afternoon. Um, but we may think about how we uh, set up the, the omnibus budget for the annual town meeting. We may want to do this in a couple of votes rather than one omnibus vote. So, and that will make it easier for FY2020 tax rate setting time. Uh, other than that, North Hadley Village Hall 
uh, sale uh, update. Uh, we did receive a bid today for the real estate services for North Hadley Village Hall. Bid is under review and a recommendation will be presented to the select board meeting in January. <coughs> Everything else is moving along. <coughs> We did have a big meeting with the um, safety committee today and we focused almost exclusively on the new OSHA requirements that are coming due on February 1st, 2019. And uh, there's a lot to do. It's going to take us three to five years to go through all the upgrades that uh, the OSHA requirements will have. But so long as we're working towards a goal, uh, the Department of Labor's uh, safety uh, will uh, will work with us and not uh, not uh, penalize us for working towards compliance. Uh, adult use marijuana update. The planning board is working on zoning bylaws. The board of health had a public hearing back in November, and they have uh, adopted new regulations, which we are advertised and posted at this point. Grant administration. Um, House Bill 4750 and House Bill 4751. These are the two special acts of legislation that we passed uh, at the town meeting to change the positions of appointed, uh, elected uh, town tax collector and uh, town treasurer to appointed positions. They've been working their way through the legislative process. Uh, uh, but they seem to have gotten stuck on the third, uh, getting to the third reading in the Senate. So working with uh, the office of Senator-elect Comerford and Representative Seibeck and Representative-elect Kerry, uh, they're taking action on this and I expect a favorable vote in the next week or two on those two important issues. How am I doing for time? Okay. All right. Three minutes. Three minutes, okay. Uh, Chris and I went to the PBPC uh, hearing on the um, on rural policy development with the uh, state. This is an initiative of the paper administration to see if they can not put together a policy manual having to do with all sorts of things, transportation, public safety, financing, education, economic development, community development, infrastructure improvements, whatever, whatever is unique to rural communities or maritime communities, um, which are doing, doing a, a, either manifest in the same way in urban environments or don't even apply in urban environments. So as a byproduct of that meeting or not, Chris and I received the, the solicitations for the direct local technical aid grants which have a due date of January 11th. We can uh, submit more than one application. These have been very helpful in the past. Uh, I'm considering and exploring developing three applications, one for the affordable housing study that the planning board brought to us a couple of months back, uh, two, implementation of financial practices associated with the Department of Revenue recommendations that we did on here the last community compact agreement and then there's some energy projects that I would like to explore. Uh, you'll have an opportunity to vote on these in January uh, Jim Maximowski, <coughs> excuse me, today also mentioned he might be looking to apply for one, perhaps for that FEMA mapping mm -hmm. um, project or, or subcommittee that was mentioned for PDPC. The other thing that I'm kicking around, and you know, I shouldn't be submitting five applications unless we've talked this with PDPC first, but uh, we just learned today that one of the things the OSHA regulations are going to impel us to do, not propel us, is um, to develop a safety coordinator position, somebody who is going to be responsible for the safety conditions of all the buildings, all the policies, all the practices, all the departments. Just one more thing to add to an already over full plate. Um, we may be able to handle that as a regional service. <coughs> okay, so maybe band together three towns to share a position that will be a 
responsible for making sure that we're compliant with the uh, OSHA regulations. So that's an idea that I developed this afternoon and talk into the safety committee. Um, we got a couple of things coming up. I'm going to talk about the special election, December 18th. Two items on there, dump truck for DBW and kitchen equipment for Hopkins Academy. That's December 18th over at Hopkins Academy. Polling hours are from noon to 8, and everybody is encouraged to exercise the right to vote. Let's have a good turnout, just like the last election. Yeah. We're all taking bets on you. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got a poll going. How many votes are we going to get? And I'm the most optimistic. So. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Hope to see you all there. I'll leave the other announcements to you. Okay. Uh, all right. Well, a couple minutes passed. We'll do our 715 public hearing on 110 Grill All Alcohol License Restaurant. We have with Just us. In time. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a very nondescript building. I'm trying to get circles. Sorry nondescript about that. building. Wow. Well, it's because I saw the big church site so just like just going to the church. The church, yeah. So I kept going up that way, then it was at the high school. <laughs> and I'm trying to like move it around, went to the library. Well, the panic was setting in. It was for me too. <laughs> I was just blowing his phone up, so. Thank you for uh, thank you. Well, for, welcome. for the record, Attorney Kevin Erickson on behalf of the 110 Grill MF Hadley LLC. With me tonight, Patrick McClellan. Yep, and I'm the area director <laughs> with 110 Grill. We are here tonight before you for um, an application for a all alcohol restaurant liquor license, a new license, um, as well as a change of hours to allow for a Sunday brunch um, and service during that Sunday brunch period. If you're not familiar with the 110 Grill concept, we are a locally owned and operated company that started out in Chumsford, Massachusetts on Route 110 in 2014. We have grown to 16 current locations that are open now in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and New York. And we have, I believe, two more slated to open in the next two months and another eight to open next year right now on the books so we're, we're growing fast we're proud to say now that you know we employ over 2,000 uh, folks uh, most of which are local to the restaurant areas where we open up we're um, we're privately held we're not a, a large corporation and we're not a big we don't consider ourselves a big chain we consider ourselves uh, you know a, a, a quality American cuisine that uh, emphasizes um, freshness, and as I said, you know we have an open kitchen concept, great attention to detail, and uh, we're excited to be joining this community in the Mountain Farms um, project. Open concept meaning you can watch the yes. cooks cook. Yeah, yes. yeah, the kitchen's all open. Any seating at the? Yeah, there's actually five, six top booths that sit right there, and they're the high top, so. You mm -hmm. Be able to watch it. Keeps them, keeps them on their toes. It keeps the language down too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds so, exciting. Yeah, and the other thing that we really focus on is allergens as well. So the over 90% of our menus are already gluten free, and uh, we can address pretty much any allergy that's out there because we are a scratch kitchen. So that's like one of our real big uh, catalysts to our, our popular popularity. And of course, you must buy local produce. We we source a lot of it local. We we deal with cost out of Boston, but Boston, uh, excuse me, cost actually buys from a lot of farms right out in this area. So, yeah. uh, safe serve all your people. Servers, managers, yep, managers yep. It's all part of our whole training program, and then we utilize hot schedules. So what it does, we can put in the date, so we get like a 60-day notice if someone's starting to expire. That's close to the way we've got the rest to catch up, so we try to stay ahead of that. That and the same thing with the um, serve safe for food. Are you the manager, the owner, the? I'm the area director, so area I just director. I oversee a few of them. Okay. So currently we're in the process of uh, holding up. That's opening up. So right. yes, this week, soon. isn't it? Yes, they're just up there. This this week. Yeah. Um, will you be lo hiring a local manager? Yeah. Or? Yep. All our managers are local. Okay. So just um, I live I live in Marble, Mass. So it's actually for here. Well, holy is not just about an hour. So, but all my managers live in this area. So, for the holy up too. Once we get an established local manager, we'll come back before this board for a change of manager application and uh, 
uh, likely take Patrick off of the, the liquor license. But as part of our typical process, because we're not yet hiring for this location, yeah, this is this is the route. And what's the expected opening date? Probably the summer of, of 19. 19? Yes. We'd like to get ahead of it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Before the students come back in, right? Yes. Be nice. Yeah, try to get a feet under us. And this is going to be uh, where, like, the LL Bean and all that's going to be? Is that where the location is? I wasn't mm -hmm. quite sure where the location is. Yeah. Where they're, they're constructing I think that's it all right Yes, now. I believe yeah. that's okay. correct. Yeah. I think the second building is on its way up now. Okay. Right. Okay. Located. Yeah. <clears throat> Sounds great to me. Jennifer, any, any conversation with the, either of the chiefs? Or? I've checked with both the chiefs and the building inspector. Everybody is okay. Obviously, we're asking for it to be held until they have their certificate of occupancy. Of um, the abettors have been notified. There's been no response from any of the abettors. Uh, we did place the legal ad. Everything's in place and ready to go. They are um, going to fill out their applications for their CV and their entertainment license. Mm -hmm. But since the alcohol license is sort of the first big step, that's the one we're moving on first. And they're going to submit the others. Um, I believe I spoke to a lady who said they're actually sending them in tomorrow. <laughs> so um, they are moving on them, and nobody's had any concerns. And What's the entertainment you're going to be having there? Do uh, TVs. Uh, we have a commercial uh, serious uh, station. And on occasion, we have a live entertainer. Uh, it's typically acoustic guitar and vocals. So, I've been many times actually to other locations. And oh, we great. really don't have anything like it around here, so it'd be great for you know, bridal showers, birthday yeah. parties, yeah. and that kind of thing too. Yeah. So it's nice. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yeah. All right, We're very excited. Yeah. Entertain a motion. Motion to approve subject to, you know, again future uh, uh, approvals. Second. Second. And this is for an all alcoholic license, correct? Yes, please. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Welcome. Thank, Thank you very much. Aye. Appreciate your time. We really appreciate Good it. Good luck with your rest of the project. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck in holding. Stop down and holding. We'll just see if you get a chance. Good luck to see us. We will. Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank you. All right. So we don't have to wait till 7.30, do we, for a row? No, we do not. That's not we don't. All right. So oh, we're fine. Let's, let's go. We have uh, Linda and uh, Sanderson and um, David A. Eisenthal to fill us in on our borrowing. Oh, yes. Thank right. you. Yeah, thank you. Last, last time we were here, we were talking about uh, whether we should go ahead and borrow in this month, in December, and you gave the authorization to go ahead and do that. We went out for a $2.84 million bond. Uh, van, um, which is a bond anticipation note, we went out to borrow short term till next July when we will be doing a bond. But at this point, we're doing um, that level of van 2.84, which will cover all of the senior center expenses through this fiscal year and all of the anticipated fire substation expenses through this fiscal year. We'll deal with the library a bit later. We'll have other opportunities to borrow for them. But that uh, gave us a good amount that we were borrowing this year, in this calendar year. Okay. And we got the rate for 2.45? 2.45. Yeah, the only thing I would add is I think that uh, both Linda and I were very pleased with the number and strength of the bids. Uh, four full bids and two partial bids, including Greenfield Savings Bank, which is new to the municipal mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. um, glad to see them participating. But um, and we're East Hampton's grown quite large too, actually. East Hampton's grown quite large. Yes, too, yes, mm -hmm. yes, 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 sir. And where is Eastern Bank out of? They're in. Uh, their trading desk is in Boston. They're headquartered in Lynn, Mass. <coughs> but they are very active in the municipal world. And have been for a long time. Yes, yes. they have. Yes. Been, yes. Have we used them in the past? Here. I think that probably they have bought. Um, short term debt in the past, maybe not in the recent past, right? but they've been active for many years. It was quite a bit lower. I mean, it really was, a, it was a, an easy decision. Mm -hmm. um, so. And so we need to entertain a vote. Um, apparently, we That's, don't need to vote. We don't need to vote. That's your option if you want to take a vote approving. The award of the notes to Eastern Bank. That's your option. Very signed it. That would be clean. That would be clean. 
Yes. I'll make, sure. make a motion to approve uh, the award with a bid to Easter Bank. Second. Mm -hmm. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Just while, while they're here, can I, may I ask a question? Sure. Uh, that's unrelated, but it's financially related. David, at the department head meeting today, there was discussion about the setting of the tax rate. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't yeah, so clear on what, what exactly the concern was and why we're delayed. So I touched upon that in the, uh, the uh, town administrator report that we've been working on the tax reconstitution relation issue pretty much all week and today um, we, we did experience trouble in making things balance and it's partly because you know people's numbers didn't jive and there's the usual back and forth of that but the uh, the change of the Department of Revenue and the way that they uh, that they account for the enterprise funds uh, makes it difficult for us to balance in a meaningful way. So, so this is balancing between the town of Hadley's books and the, what the Department of Revenue is? This would be the, the recap sheet of the way the, the cost and the revenues are yeah. broken down between the different schedules for yeah. the enterprise funds. Um, it wasn't coming up right. Uh, the number kept on moving between half a million and 16,000. And it all had to do with the way that the, uh, the uh, enterprise administrative charges are handled in the Department of Revenue revised rules for accounting. Okay. All right. We think that we've solved it. I'm going to look at the numbers again tomorrow morning. Okay. I mean, I was just clearly taking off of the fact that our you know, Sue seemed to be expressing concern about the time frame with which to get this done. Right, we need to get the uh, bills out the door by December 31st, so. Right, and we can't do that if we don't have an approved tax rate. Well, right, so we're gonna be, I think we're gonna be submitting the recap tomorrow. So that should do it. We being Dan. Dan, and Dan Zadonic. Mm -hmm. But it looks like our rate of well, 36 is going to work. It's going to work. Okay. Because uh, the, the issues are in the enterprise fund, not in the general fund. Well, certainly. Is certainly that all part of the quarterly billing? That's the revolving part no. that's messing you up right now? No. no. It's, this is just the normal annual. Oh, the, oh okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. If there's trouble, I'll let you know about it. Yeah, I mean, if we need to, I, I wasn't, it wasn't clear to me if the trouble was on the Department of Revenue side. But, so we, we have everything we need. It's just our communication with the Department of Revenue and reconciling how they're interpreting right. to get their agreement. Right. Okay. So we checked all of our numbers. Dan and I uh, checked our numbers. Uh, we agree. Uh, we, um, it's just how we report the, uh, the administrative charges. I think that's the, the problem. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I'd appreciate it if you'd let us know. Yeah. And if there's an ongoing issue, because if that were to go beyond the 31st, that's a problem. Yeah, that would be a problem. And again, Dan and I worked on this, uh, and Susan as well, uh, this afternoon. And, and again, I think we've got it at this okay. point. So okay. I'll be meeting with them tomorrow morning, and if there is a problem, I'll let you know. Thank you. I just, you know, kind of. Nothing to do with me. <laughs> While you're here, just FYI. <laughs> well, you don't have a tax rate to pay the bill you've just taken out. <laughs> we, we want to pay this tax once we take it out, and uh, yes. Well, least, and it does affect them. Please don't come do until this is one anyway. Oh, so. right, right. <laughs> yes, but we, we want to protect our. Uh, our ratings, though, so yeah, yeah. Well, that, that was why it yes. actually came up today. That mm -hmm. when we're looking at the, the bond rating and things like that, this right. is something that we don't want to have go astray. And are we still uh, continuing disclosure? You had suggested we're going to get that done early. Well, I think we're trying to figure out um, how we're going to uh, stage the next few financings. Um, the next certain need for disclosure, other than the annual continuing disclosure, would be the bond issue, in which would probably sell in June and maybe settle after the 1st of July. 
um, if there was a large enough note issue, we might need to have a disclosure document ahead of that. But in any case, in the spring, the town will be updating its annual continuing disclo right. disclosure. So um, these are all topics. I would expect they'll be meeting with uh, the town administrator and the treasurer probably sometime next month to kind of bring some more clarity as to what the activities will be over the next several months. Right. Things keep changing. I mean, we'll, we'll see what the election, uh, whether those pass next week or not, to mm -hmm. figure that into the borrowing. Or, and by the time, over the next few months, our next uh, note renewal uh, would be in March, the one we took out earlier, and we'll roll that over. We'll again, at that point, or well before that point, be looking, are these projects really on schedule and what they expect? Do we need that much money at this time? Do we need more? So this is going to be evolving as we go. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Thanks for your did you yeah. sign papers earlier? We yeah. did. Yes, I did. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> All set to roll. Good night. Good night. All right. I'm going to go out of order since Suzanne's here. We'll get you out of here in a timely fashion tonight. Gee, thanks. Um, senior Center Library and Fire Substation. I have nothing on Fire Substation for tonight. We continue to meet. We don't meet now again until January. Um, and Susan, what do you, Suzanne, what do you have for us this evening? Um, so we're, um, we had our hearing with uh, Conservation Commission last night, which went really well. Um, they closed the hearing, um, gave approval, contingent on some ideas that they wanted based on the uh, buffer zone and the east boundary, saying some native plantings with uh, a good root system would um, be recommended back there just some shrubs and bushes because it does great now um, but other than that um, you know that they, they went over the drainage they went over runoff they went over everything and we're pleased so that's a non-issue um, moving forward with that um, I know there's been um, paperwork going back and forth and so far as getting documentation to the planning board um, I think before you, you have tonight the ad service um, number four for the um, architects to go ahead and do the bid documents so that we're ready to roll to put those out in January. Um, this is the next piece in the process, um, a formality if you will. They were revised, um, need to be revised and kind of starting not quite from scratch, but because the building changed a little bit, both in size and in some layouts, they need to go back and resize and recalculate all of the both structural and um, infrastructure and so far as the sizing of heating and cooling, all of those things. So everybody's going to be going back and recalculating everything so that we have the right bid documents to go out. Um, but we're still on target for right now. I actually have a meeting tomorrow with um, one of the architects and the interior designer. Um, I've asked for a list on what they were included in the uh, furnishings, fixtures, and equipment of the new building so that um, we can take a walk through what we currently have and see what will need to come with us not anticipating a whole lot but still we want to make sure all the bases are covered um, so after we um, get that settled we'll be able to start <coughs> clearing out some of the stuff packing up old files um, in preparation I also have um, been invited to um, talk with the parish council at Most Holy Redeemer on Monday night um, to kind of tell them what we do, the space that we use uh, to see if it's going to fit for both of us. Um, they weren't clear on, on anything other than that we wanted to rent, so I said I'd be happy to go over and sit down and answer any questions with them, tell them what we do. Um, and I said to expect a going back and forth, some things might not work for you, then we'll adjust, we'll go back. Um, and things like that. So I think they were happy that I was willing to come kind of clear up details because there hasn't been any direct communication yet. Um, and then they will um, apparently make a recommendation if they so 
see that it would be a good fit um, to the diocese and communication will continue through David Nixon and Colbrook Realty and the diocese. So. Do you have anything you want to add? <coughs> no, other than like, you know, making a motion for the proposal, but I don't think I'm waiting. That would be my only thing, or I can do that now. We can go down. Okay. Sure. We just make a motion that we approve EDM's proposal to uh, do the construction documentation for the resized senior center. Second. Any further discussion on that? All set? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Can I just uh, ask a question as a follow up? It actually goes back to the um, North Hadley substation. So at the last meeting, you let us know that the, the subcommittee. The substation committee mm -hmm. had voted not to um, sell any of the land and you said you were going to make sure the, the people who had been requesting were notified did that happen no it didn't we got a uh, email from Phil Palumbo the uh, OPM expressing his concern about the, the barn um, crossing the boundary line by small amount inches I think it is. This is like 0.3 or something. Something it like that. It wasn't very much. So I emailed you saying do you want to reconsider? Is this something that we need to uh, hold off on? And so I have not followed through on that waiting for a resolution of that issue. I think he wanted us to um, talk with our lawyer and see what we needed to do on it. Mm -hmm since it's been on the property all these years and since the property was um, divided uh, with Kretzky prop no, it was Hanuski's property to begin with. Uh, so how that all got divided, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So I think we need to further investigate with the uh, tax, or to, to the lawyer who was did the- was, was our attorney? Yes. Okay. So pending the outcome of that, which I'll bring back to the subcommittee. Uh, I'm not going to notify anybody about your vote because we may have to take a different direction. Is that right? Yes. Okay. okay. Yeah, and I, I'm just asking just because. <coughs> just because of, because of where the end. barn is, it's like a corner uh, that sits on the other piece of property, so I'm not sure. Adverse possession. Yeah, adverse possession. <laughs> So the barn isn't We're actually on the property. The okay. barn is on our property except for a, a corner. So we have to see what we need to do before we can chainsaw. Huh? Chainsaw. <laughs> Take off that corner. <laughs> or just slice That it has down. happened in Hadley. Oh, no <laughs> I'm no sure kidding, I'm yes. Not surprised. <laughs> are, are you familiar with is it three inches or three tons? It's I, I don't know exactly it's what it is, but it's, I think it's, it's so yeah. tiny yeah. that you could just, but it's supposed to be 15 feet, you just go, it's all, it's been there forever, so it's not a big deal. Yeah, so we're, we're, like, I'm going to do everything legally that we're supposed to be doing and mm -hmm. just be clear yeah. on it, yeah. Okay. The other thing, too, we talked about last week was the, I don't know how to call this person, clerk of works, program coordinator, mm -hmm. that kind of thing about these program projects, manager. program manager. Mm -hmm. I think we need to get the title nailed down, but um, we have uh, received that email. Oh, we did. David. Okay. David. Oh, right here. Yeah. Okay. David Tudor just sent this today. Okay. Hot off the press. Okay. So Hot off the is press. That would give us some time to uh, look at everything. It certainly is quite lengthy. Um, yeah. It covers everything. And you know, we want to make sure that the um, clerk of the works that we're looking at, which would be a building program clerk of the works, doesn't interfere actually with the two other clerk of the works that are hired by uh, the other firms. Uh, I was talking to David before uh, this meeting. And what he wanted me to suggest to you is that the Municipal Building Committee can set up a meeting for next Tuesday. We can help review this if you so desire. You can handle it. It's whatever you guys want. But if you want our input, we can certainly go through that for you. Um, Actually, he, and he had said that you had not seen it yet, the, the whole Municipal That's correct. Uh, no, no. So, personally, I would like you to go over it as a committee. Yep, uh, we will do that then. And look at the bullet points that David had pointed out on this, um, on what he thought 
should be entailed in it and if the two cross over between what the other OPMs and clerks do for the other two um, yeah there's certainly clerks. that's the concern and we want to make sure that the line is drawn and what we're mm -hmm. doing we don't want to duplicate yeah. uh, what they're doing but we want to make sure our side is covered and that we're you know being watchful of the whole projects too mm -hmm. It doesn't hurt to have an extra set of eyes on the project as we've learned from past experiences. And then the other uh, issue that was raised at this morning's department head meeting um, is just making sure there was some concern expressed. I think um, Jim Maximoski mentioned that other towns who've hired this type of position have run into issues where they were deemed to be a municipal employee as opposed to a contract employee. Correct. But in one of the things I made note of in um, David Tudor's um, write-up and then j just some conversation he had is he, he's expecting that it's a, like a 20 to 30 hour a week type position. And if that's the case, that might be beneficial to making sure it's a contract as opposed to an employment situation where all they're doing for several months is, you know, working on behalf of the select board. So. And I think that's what we did years ago with the building committee uh, for school and public yes. safety. We, that wasn't a full-time was position. Yeah, that it was, was with Mike Bryan. That was 20, 20 hours, There's 20, 20 pros hours. and cons to that because they can come back and collect unemployment and things of that nature if after they're deemed they, to be, yeah. if they're deemed to be a town employee at the time of their... Yeah, so Jim Zusko, you know, was interested in just making sure that, you know, yeah. we, we're careful on that front. Mm -hmm. we, are clear. Yeah. My only comment on this this list, and I know it's preliminary, but would be that um, in my mind, the bullet points involving coordination of the move are a lot more critical than transferring utilities and accounts and things like that, because I think that should fall under our project managers for the actual projects. So, um, and I think that if we can narrow it down and just coordinating the move a little bit, we might be able to save a little money on the expertise that's involved. Yeah. And what I brought up at the department head meeting, a suggestion is uh, I did talk to Larry Tuttle, the architect that we have on call, and he's more than willing to help out in any way up front uh, just to get things moving because of the critical time frame. That's a suggestion. If we, if you want to, we can talk about bringing him on. We have, we have 19,000 and change in that budget right now. Maybe like 15 we can play around with, but it, it might be some way of getting things going. And it, as, as we saw, there was difference of opinion on where some people can fit. And that he might be instrumental on that. Uh, it's something we could think about, getting him on board. He can start looking at that stuff. Well, if you guys are, are meeting... We'll meet Tuesday. Meet Tuesday, and then we won't meet again until, what, the first week of January? January 9th. January 9th. Yeah, I mean, and realistically, not a lot's going to happen Between around us. the holidays anyway. Mm -hmm. So would, would we be in a position then maybe on the 9th to pull the trigger on something? Sure. Is there one person that the municipal building <coughs> on your board that we can talk to if we have things that we want to bring up in the meantime before that night with regard to anything that we might be talking with Larry, some suggestions or what have you? Who should we be approaching first? I'd be happy to be that contact person, come to your meetings a couple times, or you know, if somebody else wants to do it as well, I can volunteer. So, okay. Yeah. I'll just reach out if there was. If yeah. We'll, we'll do that. So if if possible, I'll we'll be able to vote on this on January 9th, I guess. Mm -hmm. That'd be great. In order to move forward with actually hiring someone and getting them. Because yeah. mm -hmm. we at that point we really need to pull the trigger yeah. quickly. Yeah. To and, make it the, and in the meantime, we'll be critiquing this, bringing back some suggestions, getting your suggestions back, mm -hmm. and then possibly, you know looking a little bit further with regard to uh, placement within this building, <coughs> giving, again, some more suggestions of what might might be possible. Can I just throw out there, um, 
if it if we do have somebody and he is good at conceptual work, I don't know if it would be worth spending, you know, something less than ten hours between now and that meeting just looking at the planning board, you know, what their needs are, just some different areas, different office space, and kind of really kind of solidifying some of that so that when we do decide on the next step, we kind of have a plan for what we're going to do instead of just deciding at that point what we're going to do. I thought, you know we I, mean? I thought we did at the last meeting decide mm -hmm. where everybody yeah. was going. Yeah. We did, but there are, I mean, the there is concern of the planning board not thinking they're not going to be able to fit all their stuff over here and where they're going to fit their stuff. There was a lot of discussion at the, that Jim Maximowski brought up at the department head meeting, but I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be fine. And, and yeah. what we talked about at the department head meeting was the fact that whoever winds up being this coordinator position, that everybody will have the opportunity to be fully interviewed, you know, to make sure that, you know, their, their voice is heard directly. And I, I think there's concern about, you know, us making a decision on their behalf and not understanding what the needs really are. Just, mm -hmm. you know, I understand that. Yeah. Um, and I think but, that, but sometimes you need to talk people through. Yeah, but I think the everybody needs to. to understand this is temporary. Right. Until we, you know, everybody's just going to have to crunch. This is crunch time. Everybody's just going to have to make do with whatever we can do for them, and hopefully it works for everybody. But that's that's our goal right now is just to make sure everybody has a place to meet, to um, put their things. You know, it may not be perfect, but at least it will be something. Mm -hmm. I think we're all there. I, I, at this point, yeah. it's yeah. Uh, just a Christian's point. I'm yeah. just trying Some to. Some of the people. Well, they, and, and it's the other people that I'm saying to that they need to get on board because we're trying to make things work for them too. So hopefully, you know, we can. We did it several theirs. times ask for input there. We did get yeah. some input from some, but and, and my only it's silence from a lot of. My only feeling is if we need to rent some kind of storage space for files, just knowing what that is, you know, so we can look at that. I don't know. If, I don't know. It's free rent. History. Yeah, yeah. I don't know <laughs> what it is. You know? I don't know what it is, but yeah, I, I think there could be. I think one of the things, things we have to realize is there is a concern for some security on some of the stuff, and. Mm -hmm. Quite honestly, we need to upgrade in that area, and that is of importance. Uh, I think that is paramount that we make sure that, that most of these departments feel comfortable with what they have to secure and how it's being secured with so many people going to be intertwined. Then that was certainly was a concern uh, when we moved out of here and went over there on how how that stuff was going to be secured. Luckily, it was so pretty easy because it was in the safety pod, complex. in the safety <laughs> complex <laughs> with the cops there. Yeah. So that was a lot it's easier to we could break in them. But I think there is a concern there, and, and I think it's underlying and it's festering a little bit with some people. But that, that can easily be achieved. And again, we do have Larry. Um, we can just use him on some some of these quick quick items too you know if something like that comes up we, we have the ability to use him he has a lot he has a lot of staff that he can go back to and right, so we'll let we'll let the municipal building committee hash, I'm sorry we'll let the municipal building committee hash this over and okay and see what they want to you know suggest to us we're open certainly open for suggestions Okay, so, so we'll, we'll stay make sure that after your the ninth is Tuesday. a critical meeting with you guys. Yes. Okay. That would be fine. That's well, take the arrows. Sure, the ninth. Great. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I think All day long. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Sounds, <laughs> sounds good. Yeah. If you would rather do that, no, I mean, okay. it's hunting <laughs> season, so. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> 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 License renewals, get those out of the way. Uh, we want to make a motion. Je uh, Jennifer, do you want to share if everybody is up to date now? Uh, the, the, unfortunately, only five came in since your last meeting. It's a very brief list. Mm -hmm. 
Um, I did receive one more today. Um, I also sent out the letters based on your vote from the last meeting. Hopefully I will get everybody else in before the end of the year. Otherwise, um, after January 9th meeting, I will come in with a full list of everybody who's not um, returned their documents and renewals yet. Make a motion to accept the ones that have come in. Five or so. I'm sorry, I don't have it literally in front of me. I thought it was five that had come in. Maybe it was seven. There's seven. Well, six. 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 Somewhere between five and seven. Seven. <laughs> um, Call I, six. I, I, I made the list on, on Monday morning, so I'm sorry, I can't remember exactly who's on there. But they, all of the people who are on that list, all of the documents are turned in. Their, their fees are paid. They owe no taxes. I see six. Yeah. 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 First one was just a header. Okay. Motion to approve. Okay. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Community communications proposal. Should I? Is that you? All right. That's yeah, you. So um, we started talking about this probably last summer, beginning or maybe last spring. Uh, right now, we use Code Red as the emergency alert system for the community, and um, so I've had some exposure with this using this company in the past in previous places I've lived in larger counties and cities and uh, they've done pretty well. So we looked at a bunch of other options that were out on the market and uh, this Everbridge Nixle seemed to be the best fit for our needs. So I had their representative meet with um, Chief Mason and Chief Spanknable and do a demo and then I think he also uh, did a demo for Molly as well as myself. Um, and basically what this is, is a single system that allows for text, email, push notifications, uh, once it's set up, um, streaming onto the, the town website, so all the notifications are in one area. Um, and one of the concerns that I've heard is that the residents were concerned about getting too, too many emails and text messages. And so the option they would have would be to subscribe or not to, to subscribe to as many departments as they would like. The goal is that if you have kids in park and rec soccer and you care about what's happening with soccer practice, then you get the text message or the email saying soccer practice is canceled. If you have people, if you attend whatever event at the senior center and it's canceled because of snow or whatever, you get those text messages. But obviously you probably wouldn't get the soccer practice um, notification. You may, but um, so uh, and then the ability for the uh, Mike and Mike to override that and send out the reverse 911 blast that they need to to everybody uh, would be there. Um, basically, the code red contract expires at the end of June. Um, I spoke with. Chief Spanknable, and he said that um, he was okay with trans transitioning over um, after he had the demo. Uh, <coughs> this falls under his budget, but he said after he did the demo, there's quite a bit more offerings that the, this newer system has, and so he was comfortable with that. Um, what I suggested was that we move forward with this prorated year and start getting some of the other departments up and running. And then once the uh, fire department and the police department are comfortable or able to make the transition, they can do that. That way we have a nice overlap in uh, communication ability. Um, that way, you know, code red is not expiring June 30th and we're starting with this July 1st. So anyways, that's, uh, that's the summary of it. It's all the compatible. This, all of the departments could use it. Currently, the Mother's Club um, funds the school's notification right. system. Um, it would be up to the school if they wanted to come over and use that Mother's Club funding maybe for something else. I don't know. Um, but it wouldn't cost any more. They're just no, another it, department. It, it would not. It would yep. be just another department. Um, the one aspect that I really like about this is that we can bring everybody under one umbrella 
and that way if we have any incidents with erroneous messages or problem messages being sent out or things like that, uh, we can track it back to where it came from, who it came from, um, and it's all, there's a good amount of accountability and we're all under one system, one email, one single sign up. So you don't have to sign up with Park and Rec and all these other places and there's no more um, kind of ad hoc email lists that maybe soccer coaches are maintaining or whatever. The comparable fee to the other one. So um, once the fire and the police department come over, um, it will be just about within a couple hundred dollars, possibly a little bit less, but right about the same as the current code red contract. Um, in the meantime, until the police and fire department come over, it'll be cheaper than what we're currently paying for the code red. <coughs> but basically, the, the reverse 911 abilities they require are the expensive part. So. Is, uh, is there a way to transition? transition the people that are already signed up for code red over to this system so they don't have to so they don't have like a seamless transition so my understanding is no because people have to opt in to whatever service and so just like when you know with the, the spam rules that are out there and whatnot you can't just take someone's email and just say okay now you're signed up for this list even though you okay. consented to the first list and it's the same thing okay uh, you would yeah. think it'd be okay but yeah uh, from what he said, the best practice is to have people re-sign up, and that way you have a valid list, and you don't have to fresh email addresses and things like that. And you do have to sign up for it. It's not something you're automatically right. subscribed to because you're a resident of Hattie or something. So there's three. My understanding is there's three ways to sign up. Um, basically, we would get a specific text message number, just like you know, like a five-digit number that you can text to, mm -hmm. and say, sign up or whatever, and you. Anybody who texted that number would be automatically added to the email list, right, and to the text messaging list. You could also sign up through the Nixle website. They give a specific website that you go to, put a link on the home page or whatever. Um, and then there's also the possibility of, um, what was it, uh, uh, an app on the website? Is that what the, uh, the web page person said? Um, they said that they, they could put a link to their Nixle on the subscriber, on their subscriber's page, which is right. apparently what other towns do. And so there's basically three ways to sign up for it. And probably the best thing would be um, when, I don't know if we could, if it's allowed or not, but when tax bills or water bills, something like that, put an insert in there and get it out to everybody in town and say, look, these are your options, this is what it does, sign up. So that way you can get the communications that you need without getting the ones you don't. Suffer seems so much. Uh, I mean, definitely from the consumer's standpoint, you know, the residents, I think, for all the reasons David stated, it's, it's a better system. Um, but also from the town user standpoint, it, it's a much more easy to use, functional, modern version of what we're doing right now. So, I mean, for the same amount of money, it, to me, it's a no-brainer that we would go this route and again as long as you know you've gotten the buy-in from the uh, yeah. current owners of the of the system. So um, the one of the abilities that this has that um, Cobra doesn't is iPods, which is the alert system that if you ever had a, like a flash flood warning pop up on your iPhone that annoying mm -hmm. screeching sound <laughs> the emergency alert system. Um, this system will utilize that uh, emergency alert access as well, um, so the police and fire can can uh, trigger those alerts if they absolutely need to. So there's 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 some new capabilities, and it basically just brings it all under one umbrella compared to what we have now. And it's all uh, compatible with what 911 has with the police chief of fire chief. Yeah, uh, Chief Spankable said that it um, it's compatible. It will do everything. Code Red does now, plus some. He was concerned about um, um, backup systems, like if, if you know their servers in California or whatever went down. But apparently they have five different locations around the country, so redundancies. Yeah. So if something went down, and then the other thing he was concerned about was if for some reason he couldn't log in or what happens if he couldn't, you know, had technical issues. 
and uh, after he talked to the rep, I guess they he has the ability as a police or fire chief to call somebody and say, here's my password, this is the message I need to send, blast out to everybody in town. So um, it, it seemed like he was um, okay with that. And like right now, what we're using for communication, which is head and shoulders above, above what we did even five years ago, is right. Facebook. Right. So, But if you don't use Facebook, then you may not get the update from Mitch saying you know, mm -hmm. there was an accident on Rocky Hill Road and right. the, the pole's down or whatever like that. The DPW, Moody Bridge Road closure. Right. I mean, all of that could go through the system and really improve communication in town. So the, um, the county I lived in, in Virginia, which was about 200,000 people-ish, um, they used this system and the way they had it set up with police and fire and their, their DPW was anytime, you know, if you, if you were subscribed, you could get accident notifications of, hey, you know, Bay Road's closed at the bridge uh, the, over the Fort River because of an accident or, uh, you know, the traffic lights are out at Route 9 Mill Street, that kind of thing. And it was good because it helped you avoid issues. So, so your recommendation? My recommendation would be to accept the proposal from Nick Nixel, um, so that way we can kind of start the overlap, overlap and startup period um, to start transitioning away from code red. Motion to approve, David. Recommendation. Any further discussion? Is that do we have money in the, the budget that we can use for this, or does the chief or anybody have money in their budget? How would we? So where would this come from? I guess the chief said that. We, um, and I asked him this specifically, he said once he transitioned off of Code Red, he'd be okay with covering the cost of it again because it's about the same amount and it's become out of his emergency management budget. So the issue would be covering the intermediate cost of the first of the six months or so of the transition period and I think you were working on finding something about it. Right, so we were, it's about $1,900 for that transition and we would uh, ask for a reserve fund transfer. Yeah. Or in either that or a line to line transfer at the last two months of the fiscal year. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks for doing the legwork on that. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. All right, let's do Mass DOT Agreement Bay Road Route 9 Traffic Signals Pride Convenience. All right, so I was contacted by the Massachusetts Department of Transportation. Apparently part of the project uh, over at Pride is to upgrade the traffic signals at the intersection of Bay Road and Route 9. And I was surprised when I looked at the agreement that it was a three-way agreement between MassDOT, Pride Convenience Incorporated, and the town of Hadley, which I've not seen before. In particular, my name was required for this project. Apparently they want us to take over the um, emergency preemption system as installed. Um, you mean the blinky thing that goes on with the ambulance system? Mm -hmm. Not, uh, yes, yes, okay. the thing that controls the lights. <laughs> yeah. 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 I had to ask. <laughs> <laughs> so they ask. get the green light when they're going the direction. Right, they're right, right. Yeah. So first of all, uh, I, A, I don't have the authority to sign the town up for an infrastructure uh, improvement and ownership. So this needs to go to the select board for review, but it's also something I've never seen before. I was unaware that we had ownership of the emergency preemption system. I thought the state owned it all along. Yeah, it's all so Route 9. It's all state highway. Yeah. It's theirs. And 47 as well. It's no, so not the emergency beacons. The emergency beacons, I think, are ours. I don't think so. I think that's, didn't they install the cameras and all the other stuff down by the bridge and yeah. with all the beacons? I thought it was all the yeah. I mean, we've got the we've got the uh, transponders, the emitters, those yeah. are installed on the on the vehicles. On the vehicles, but we don't own the overhead wires and the apparatus and all that. So is this their Whenever the lights go down yeah. or whatever, it's always DOT that comes and fixes them. It's yes, not so us. us. So this is their way of shifting the cost to us. Well, starting down at the mall mm -hmm. and all the way over to over the bridge. Of course, Northampton has that one over there, but it's actually the state that takes care of that one, yeah. too. That's also on Route 9. Yeah. So I talked to DPW, to the police department and the fire department about this, and uh, they all agree that uh, we don't own the system currently. We don't have the expertise or the equipment to handle the maintenance of or the money. Or the money. <laughs> have we, have uh, we checked with Amherst? 
because Amherst, Amherst would put the first beacons up. Or well, it was the reason that it was the Amherst Ambulance yes. that did that, mm -hmm. but they still, it was the state that put them up. Okay. And so, had them installed in their ambulances at that point. So, so I don't want to stand in the way of the Pride convenience store opening up, but I think this is something that we can't um, sign. I don't think this is going to hold up the Pride convenience store opening up. It has nothing to do with the Pride. So my question was, was this a, as part of the agreement, was Pride paying for the improvements to the intersection? And then now yes. they don't want to, so they don't want to, basically Pride doesn't want to cover the cost of uh, I think it's come up from Mass OT okay. more than anything. But did anybody talk to the most recent DOT <coughs> District 2 director? I've reached out several times to Mass DOT about this. I have not received any response from them. These, this is all in response to your emails to us way back a couple weeks ago? Yes. Okay. I mean, that's that's the other part that worries me. Is, you know, they're getting, they're, in, they're asking us as a town to hold up a certificate of occupancy for a business on something that's irrelevant to, to the business. It's like, uh, there, there was, there's major issues with their permitting process. Uh, prides, they split it up into two to try to keep things moving. And they're not getting a response back. I'm not getting a response back. But they had contacted me to, to tell me to hold up the CO until it got resolved, mm -hmm. which I had a lot of contact, but now, <laughs> you know, it magically just. I mean, all the sidewalks are up to code and everything according to the state, or as far as that? I don't know. Is I'm it, not getting a response they were back on about that. that outgoing driveway. I believe it is, I be, because that was that first permit that they had, uh, yeah, had. Yeah, and their second that. permit has to do with the lights and the crosswalks. Okay. But on your inspections that you and Chief have done on it so far, they can be issued a... We did a major inspection today, uh, most of the afternoon. Uh, we have a, uh, everything passes some minor things that they have to fix. We're allowing them to um, put produce into the store with the hope with, on their end that they'll have everything that we've re listed fixed for a final walkthrough next Friday to, to finally issue the CO so they can start selling gas and opening up the store. I, we've talked to Jennifer in regards to the transitioning with the alcohol. I think we have to kind of do some steps here. But I, I, I also... So they have their locked area, everything that yes, we that have. Yes, that all is, is... It's not an open free-for-all like over in Northampton. Yeah. The beer, the beer. The beer and the wine. Yeah. Just go and pull it off the yeah. shelf. Uh, I've, never been, I've never been in there. Once I have my one. Oh, this is what they were talking about. Oh, so okay. you just go in, there's a bottle of wine there or a pack of beer here. Yeah. You know, it's so this is all contained in one area. Yeah, I remember it's the whole design. separate yeah. one. Yeah, it's all it's totally separate. separate. <laughs> 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 so are they, are they required? I just don't understand yeah. DOT's position. And are they doing more road work out there? Is that what they're trying to no. say? or? Is that what this is coming from? I, I what they're understand. saying is the the second permit that had to deal with the the intersection, the lighting, and the crosswalk isn't f finished. They are not signing off on it. Now, as of today, uh, Pride told me that they got everything done according to what uh, Mass DOT wanted. I'm going to try tomorrow to call them up directly and email it to the gentleman at Mass, Mass DOT to make sure that that is actually true. So I don't want to get in a position or get the town in a position with Mass DOT saying don't give out a certificate until this work is done. I don't see how, first of all, I don't see how Mass DOT can uh, s 
stipulate that when it has it's it's kind of disconnected with the the site so those are some issues that I mean if it's site review and everything's up to code then there's nothing we can do well you this that we've never seen well before. that's true I, that's my it. position I don't see how we can my hold position something up is we don't know the state anything but I don't Still also weird. want to get the town exactly. into an issue that the the state coming back to us and say we right. told you not to do this right. and went and That's did. That's not up for them to tell us what to do. <coughs> I know, but we have it is better to have it we asked them for Yeah, we need to get it resolved. Well, I think that Amherst would probably have a bigger issue with that beacon not working or not being there than we would ever have based on the number of runs they have. So I don't see how they could push that on us and. Or say sorry, we're not going to do it anymore. Correct. Okay, so what okay. do you need from us? I mean, it sounds like we're not comfortable right. clearly signing this, and we agree we don't really have any skin in this game. It's between the DOT and Pride. Pride. Mm -hmm. You make a motion to reject the um, what is this? Or proposal least, you know, or agreement? Yeah. Agreement. Yeah. 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 Second. Yeah. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And then you and between you and Tim, you'll go back to the yeah, state and figure out if if they no if they answer their phone or call you back. Just keep no, the lights on. Here you go. Yeah. <laughs> So David's working on the beacon. I'm trying to work on the, the permit the issue. Permit. And yeah. yeah, so we've got several. The, the engineers and nobody has had contact with either one of them from state. I mean, just you, except for what you had in yeah. emails. No. So Apparently, the, yeah. the engineering outfit has actually been in contact with me as has the lawyer. <coughs> convenience. Okay. All right. Nobody from the state has been in touch with me. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Though. State it's a skeleton, uh, skeleton crew of brand new youngins that don't, they're, they're trying to figure out their own jobs. No, we had all those guys in here and they told us what they were going to do with the timing of the lights at one time and all of that and for the, for the emergency response units that needed to get through mm -hmm. and oh, I don't even know whatever happened to that. They never came back? No, they didn't. Scared them off. Wasn't <laughs> 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 ready. <laughs> but the good news is that if everything goes well, Pride might be open by next weekend. I have so many people asking me when is it going to be open? Everybody. Daily. <laughs> Everybody. The yes. whole yeah. region is waiting yeah. for this thing to people open. People coming from Belchertown are yeah. wondering when they can swing in. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the cones up, there had to be. 30 cars this afternoon pulling in trying to get gas. No kidding. Well, I've seen people yeah. over at the electric, yeah. you know, at the charging, charging stations. Plugging. Yeah, those those are working. Yeah. 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 And did they fix the issue with that sign for the electric charging station, or is that no. still? Oh, the planning board issue? No. Yeah, well, it's been off, I noticed, that night. Yeah. So at least it's not lit up anymore. Right. Okay, so maybe that's their solution. Maybe. Don't light it up. I, they have to have something there. I mean, it's it's a directional sign. So we don't have the, anything in our bylaws talking about size of directional signs. And it's it's a complicated mess. It's a nice touch for people to be able to do that. You can go to the back and plug in. Yeah. You know. I mean, it shows where those those charging stations are. They have to have something there. Maybe we can put the bikes there. <laughs> you know, since they're... Since they're <laughs> they'll be the first across right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Follow Joyce. <laughs> you know, since Bad they're job. already... <laughs> Joyce, since they're already 25% with uh, project plans, maybe it's time to really put the pressure on to signal people to get in here and tell us what they're going to be doing mm -hmm. for the nine project. Thing. Well, now it's delayed again till 2020. They're work. One they're two. working on Route Nine. There's usually eight or ten guys out there surveying like crazy. Well, they're all surveying, the but they've also delayed yeah. the project. The bid, the bid won't go out until September 2021. So, so 2022 out there. Yeah, so we've got a few more years before that's actually going to get anywhere, unfortunately. 
All right, so let's move on. Our last thing on our scheduled agenda before executive session will be uh, some discussion tonight on the 2020 budget preparation. And I thank everybody that has uh, participated in sending out our emails. There were some things that uh, Christian had sent us on um, a Priorities, priorities, schedule. priorities, things, and David has sent out uh, a priorities list also um, for town hall, capital projects, public safety, DPW, schools, and other boards. So, does anybody want to start this off? Um, looks like you started from July of this year. Christian. I was trying to, well, the schedule, I was trying to do the fiscal, mm -hmm. like a general fiscal year. We could do it anyway. <laughs> we can no. rearrange it. I just. No, the, yeah. I mean, that's basically how it goes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how we want to. I we want to go through each area or. I had gotten. Uh, the first one? Yeah, I mean, that, that is the more. Person? Because that, I think, drives the others then. Yeah. And the schedule, I was trying to make it not specific to this list, right. but more generic, generic outline to follow. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I could dive in. Um, so I try, again, tried to break this up into somewhat departments. I don't know if this is divisions, like we want to do the budget, but it is departments so that we could kind of narrow in on things um, for town hall you know human resources looking at hiring a full-time director uh, also as part of that under that window we're doing the compensation and classification plan that we voted on at special town meeting in the fall um, trying to adopt something hopefully adopt the plan there and implement that into our budget this coming year. Um, department had performance reviews, uh, you know, implementing that into our yearly schedule. Um, accounting, I have us reviewing our current solution. Um, something that I didn't know but was in a previous list was the audit report management letter. Mm -hmm. that, that's more of like a standard item. Mm -hmm. um, information technology pursue regionalization grant to implement the laser fish system we were talking about that last week i believe um, just reviewing our current solution is it adequate and look for possible sharing opportunities with the school department and things level out over there um, financial planning just looking at short range range and long range plans opeb um, uh, possible opportunities for sharing incentives for regionalization. David talked about a grant possibly doing that. Um, town charter review, we've talked about it, you know, having an administrator versus a manager. Um, clerk, collector, treasurer, I kind of just threw those there. Um, I know we're trying to. Um, but we already the, voted on two of them. We already did that. Yeah. And I put those there just as placeholders so we don't forget about them. Right, and it's um, not, the implementation's not until future date anyway. Yeah, 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 and what, you know, let's not what forget about them. Um, and for all departments and boards, really, transition planning uh, as longtime knowledgeable staff starts to look at retirement, how do we prepare for that? I, I think that's a problem we can face in the years to come, just throughout the whole town. Um, building relationships with our uh, new reps, senators uh, and then just promoting professional development amongst the town staff and leadership I don't know if there's anything there you guys want to shoot down or discuss or how, how we talk through it but that's my staff certainly everything that we try to look at like yeah. every year uh, and trying to uh, as David suggested, the rotating schedule. Mm -hmm. It kind of will blend in with this on um, 
John, last week we talked about. Yeah, I watched. Did last you watch? Week. Yeah, okay, I, I'm, so that I'm keeping up with okay. it. <laughs> <laughs> Everything looks good. Just so, just so that you know, we're rolling over uh, and prioritizing what we're working on and what needs to get worked on next. Um, so that kind of brings you into. Do, did anybody have a chance to uh, do anything with their? Departments that you're like in charge of. I did have Mike and Mike and Mike chiefs sent me um, just a quick uh, runoff of what they had for their budgets for this coming year. But do you want to finish this up first, or, or is that just where we're going to start uh, right now? However, we want to do it. Yeah, we can keep going uh, through this. Well, I think or one focus on departments. I think one of the things we need to talk about is we've tried different. We've tried different ways in the past to move the ball forward mm -hmm. on some of these things, and I a think... A lot of it's financial, though. Well, as you said, so there's some things that lend themselves to <coughs> trying to find the money. So, like, if we collectively agreed we really think we need a full-time human resource director, then that becomes a budget issue to try to figure out how do, we, how do we fund that, and we also need to be making sure that we have job description so that we figure out the financing, we can actually pull the trigger on posting the job. But then there are other things that are more long-term in nature. So like when you talk about financial planning yeah, in particular, and then also looking at the town charter review, um, s some of those things lend themselves to more of a, like a work group environment. And I don't even remember if it was last year or the year before, I've lost track, but I think it was last year. Um, we tried to form subcommittees, like, and we said, okay, you know, somebody from the finance committee and select board and whoever else, can you work on this? And then another group work on that, and another group work on that. And it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, some got done and others didn't get done. Mm -hmm. And we have, we have new players here now too, but you know, just trying to figure out realistically what we can what we can accomplish, so kind of parsing yeah. out what's a 2000 FY19 thing and what needs to be ongoing, like the administrator versus manager, to me that lends itself to uh, definitely like a work group to be interviewing other places that have done it, coming up with pros and cons. You probably want participation. I know there are a couple of people in town who are interested in, in looking at that and doing some legwork on it. And it doesn't cost any money, it's just matter of forming a committee but making sure the mission is clear yeah you know and and two I didn't pre say this before I made or before we started into this this is a list that I think we need to pare down and maybe yeah. pick a few goals for yeah, this exactly. year mm -hmm. I think this is more of trying to cover everything <laughs> but it's way too much to try to actually accomplish but, but it job. actually it actually rolls into what David worked on mm -hmm. yeah. and yeah. and rotating of what our priorities should start to be and who's next in line to get mm -hmm. the attention that they should be getting. So we focused on public safety. You know, everybody was a little hesitant on a building committee and they worked out real well over the past couple of years, few years and you mm -hmm. know if, if like Molly said if we had some financial team together mm -hmm. to go over some of these these other points, mm -hmm. you know, and, and look at it long term for a few years. May, may help us out in the long run. Mm -hmm. Can we <coughs> a regionalize? Can we set this priority list to uh, make it a select board policy that we update this, say, by December 1st every year? That way, uh, you know, when we're focusing on the budgeting for the next fiscal year, that way we have an updated uh, you know, list to work from. Mm -hmm. I, I agree, but I'd back up that date. Yeah, okay. that, 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 that goes to my fiscal calendar, yeah, right, implementing right. it, you know, yeah. if we can get ahead of the game in July yeah. or something, then... Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah or like September 1. Or September, yeah, whenever it is. It's you know, probably going to be ongoing, just don't ignore it. Yeah, yeah. So I guess it would have to be after a special town meeting, right, in, uh, in order to really know what is, say, approved and not approved as far as spending and purchasing and things like that. Mm -hmm. right? Well, I think from a prioritization standpoint that we can... We can really 
you, you know, you come out of the, the spring town meeting, mm -hmm. the annual town meeting, and then we've got time to be talking about this over the summer. Mm -hmm. And we can set the goals and then adjust it depending on what happens at the, the special town meeting. It just seems like we get jammed up because everything, yeah. So and it's, it's almost too late at that point, you know. So what's the ideal date everyone's thinking as far as uh, updating this and moving forward? I would say for July 1st. July 1st. Which would get us into the next budget process, but at least having this for a base. Mm -hmm. Right. And then updating it again in July 1st to see where we... Hopefully we can cross off this things year. over year. And exactly. Yeah, 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 I think it's nice to check things off a list. So if you have yeah. a list, we can review the one from last year and say, we did this, you know. <laughs> or we didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, or we tried. <laughs> we tried, but we don't have the fun. Yeah. Yeah. No money, and it's not funny. <laughs> <laughs> You're laughing. No, no. Uh, it's, it's my life. <laughs> um, yeah. Do you want to keep going through the list, or try? Do you guys want to highlight anything you think is important well, for this budget what cycle? Kind of what about David's list to? Um, yeah, the rotation. Yeah, well, the, I think this the rotation, nice. which I think you know, we can it plays into this. Mm -hmm. right. um, I think how we would want to move forward to what our next projects would be. You know, I I, I did have uh, we had. I don't think that we're particularly done uh, with fire and police. Mm -hmm. We've made great strides this year. We have a few things on the burners this year. Uh, there were some discussions on uh, about what they put together. Do you want me to just copy these off and put them in your box so that you have them? Great. Yeah, sure. And we should have it for the, for the next meeting. Um, they just kind of threw it together for me tonight, but I didn't know if you wanted to get into um, that, that, old, that old pet, didn't they change some of the laws on that? They did. Yeah. Just right. lately. Yeah, so they changed the accounting rules. So we went from Gatsby 45 to Gatsby 70, 74, 75. And the main change is that the liability, whereas you formally could claim that over a 30 year period, now it's all due at once. So on paper, our liability jumped $900,000. The actual liability remained the same. It's just how you report it. But it's not a funding issue from a cash standpoint. No, no, we stay the course. Yeah, yeah. So, so my um, only thoughts on, on what David did, I can see where you no, know, um, David has general government and then public works. I I think at least from what we know right now, and, and given where we're at sitting here today. I think there are some things in public works that need to be addressed sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. And all of ge general government, I don't think, can can be addressed in one fell swoop. So it, in my mind, the human resources right now is a priority that has ramifications across the entire town in a, in a good yeah. way, if we can get going on that. and. There may be some things in public works. I mean, obviously, you know, we've got the, the director coming on board, and, and um, but you know, looking at staffing and everything, there may be some things that we want to do there sooner rather than later, depending on what the staffing looks like. And then some of some of the general government may have to spill into, like, you know, what I mean, like there'll be an overlap between the two, right? So that the accounting and IT may actually wind up being deferred, but that we would pull up some of the DPW issues. So I like the ordering, it's just I don't think it's quite as clean as yeah. we'd like it to be. I think that there's going to be some overlap with division, I guess, no matter what. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not sure how you really... Well, I think in the broad sense of like the HR, IT, all departments are going to benefit from that. Mm -hmm. And but that falls under town hall, though, right? As far as or it would. It's um, considered general right. government. It's yeah. general, but again, it does affect everything because that's even in. Uh, in the in the public it, safety. It's yeah. even in public safety about them talking about uh, upgrading of their uh, software and things of that nature. So again, that falls all 
all within the same thing too. So and with Mike also. So could could this drive our decisions so that these departments get priority these years, mm -hmm. but they're gonna they're always gonna be things that pop up in mm -hmm. other departments that we're gonna have to address, well, but maybe we try to yeah, and that, that's for people watching at home before they start getting nasty emails Why before I get home. Um, yeah. <laughs> the, Better you than me. Give me your phone, I'll reply. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> the intent is, because right now we, we issue the instruction to the departments to basically level fund every year, and then we kind of tweak it from there. So the goal would be to give whoever year it is not those that instruction to level fund. And that way we can focus all of our time and effort for the most part on the who's ever, whatever division is the priority that year. And now there's always going to be stuff with police and fire that pops up that they need or the schools or whatever. Um, but like you were saying, Christian, at least we can focus on them. And then when, you know, it's like it's like the capital projects. There's always going to be stuff from every yeah. department that, that is looking for capital. Mm -hmm. So I think there's always going to be something with budgeting as well, but at least the focus and, and, on And the other thing that goes to work with HR yeah. too is that we have not, um, which is also in uh, Chiefs Bank and Able's thing, is we have not given step raises, mm -hmm. um, and yet they're built into the school department step raises. So some people get step raise with the COLA and some don't. So um, that's something that I think you know people have gone for a number of years now without a step raise, mm -hmm. and so that again needs to be looked at this year also. David, the um, the approval at at special town meeting, the money that was approved for the compensation study, mm -hmm. where do we stand on that right now? So I'm developing an RFP for that uh, that project. I had hoped to have it ready for tonight's meeting for you to review, but I'll have it for the January 9th one. Okay. But are, are you okay with the, this? obviously the, there's going to be blending and overlap, but are yes. you okay with the general yep. premise? Of Absolutely. And as, and as far as that ordering of things, based mm -hmm. on what we've done? The only question mark I had, I put a question mark next to education. I mean, I think I think before we put them in the mix, right. the school has a five-year plan, mm -hmm. right? So maybe we should find out more from Heather, Heather Clash right where they're at, um, just rather than slate them in. The only thing I would say is that I think general government kind of needs to be top of the list this year for the HR and the other aspects versus the regardless of where the school is in their five-year plan just because of there's so many other departments that are behind yeah no my question was are they three or are they oh sure five? yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, mean, you know, I, ju I just don't I have, I have no sense at all where they're, where they're at. yeah you know? okay you're well you're I can get in contact with yeah, them so yeah you're taking on I know I really am volunteering for a lot tonight. He's got a low for the rest of the Yeah. Just sit around. Clerk in the work. I don't know. Maybe replace. That's right. So part of the things would be budget for everybody, which will be coming up. So that's a generalized uh, thing for everybody to think about. Um, and that's basically high on the list because we're going to start that process now too. So. Um, getting in their requests. I have a few from both departments here um, of what they feel that they're going to need and that we're missing, as is the personnel that we took away from the fire department that didn't actually work for the uh, assistant to the police department to help out with the fire department. Yeah, that, that didn't work out well. That didn't work out at all. And we really yeah. need to reinstitute even you know, some of those hours back into the uh, fire department to get some of those reports and things done. Um, so that would be one thing uh, to look at. And again, is it something that's shareable? You know, if we did have somebody, who, even if you had, you know, a full-time person that would work between some departments, um, other departments are asking for clerical work help also. So is there something that we could you know, job share on that one, even if we had to, you know, increase the hours for that. Well, and that, that brings... You know, the temp service that we used on at DPW for quite a number of years now has worked out real well. Is it Johnson and Hill? Or? I don't remember, but Sharon, Hill, Sharon yeah. came from there and, she, you know, yeah. she, she ended up staying, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, a few other ones we've had stayed for quite some Jennifer's time. Jennifer's pointing to herself. 
Where I came from. Oh, okay. <laughs> See, there you go. Well, and, then they, and maybe that's forever. something we should look at. Yeah. Then. You know, that way there it doesn't cost us anything, uh, you know. In terms of benefits. In, in right. terms of benefits for a while until yeah. we mm -hmm. we see, see the fit. Pick, pick the best of, of the best out, mm -hmm. like we did. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Well, and, and along that line, the other thing that keeps coming up, and we, we just can't seem to, to make it happen, what we talk about is, you know, we have the opportunity to offer internships. And the issue with the internships is that some somebody has to manage them. Somebody has to go to the yes. departments and say, what do you need? What are the skill sets? When do you need it? Bundle it up and bring it. And, and we've got thousands and thousands of students eagerly looking for that kind of thing. The good news is we have finally have first-hand experience using a high school student for that purpose. Yeah, how did um, he, he worked out good this year? Oh, yeah, he yeah. worked out like the uh, house on fire. So whether it's Hawkins Academy or whether it's the university, but, but we, we have to find somebody who can manage it and I keep thinking that maybe that could be a community volunteer who's willing to do something like that whether it's for the senior tax work off program or um, just somebody that's willing to take it on so the senior tax work off or we could have somebody in town hall sharing in that responsibility you know and yeah. since since we made some pretty good progress with the IT no, I'm actually on badly.org. Get out. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's you, awesome. You emailed me and you didn't even know it. <laughs> That's why he's like himself. He's just, just making <laughs> sure you were around. <laughs> still. He was going to send me some money still about it. Now, that, that was another question I had. Is that email has to be for sewer. Kind of, you've been sending me some board things on it. So. Okay, so that's your sewer. Yes. The assistant sewer at okay. Hadley.org. All right. So could you just check that and keep those separate? All right, make sure I'm um, that. And that's that, that's how I found out you emailed me. You answered his or somebody's out and something happened. Mm -hmm. so. so I know you can't <coughs> use the senior tax work bot for some clerical things that might be somewhat sensitive that you couldn't have someone just step in for a few hours, but is there any have you had any interest in that program? Is there I mean, could people be doing clerical work for and helping filing and things like that? Sure. Right? The, especially the fire department. And, you know, I know he's got a ton of it. I was thinking here too. I mean, we have all. We're going to have the big document scanner over here. I mean, there's all. You know, I mean, we just need somebody to coordinate that work. <laughs> but you think of it, interns or whatever to scan yeah, that I mean, stuff. Yeah. They have plenty of drafting over at UMass. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd, I'd be happy to if. You guys are okay with it? Maybe um, David, Jennifer, and I could put our heads together and try to come up with a proposal on how to how to make this happen. Sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And a human resources person's uh, job description too. Put that in there. <laughs> oh, I'm happy, yeah, I'm happy to do that. Yeah. I, 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 I'm happy to do that. Yeah. And do the HR piece okay. of that. That's it. I, I'm, I'm for it. It ain't going to cost us anything. We've got the job. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> so I'll get these to your boxes, or probably can we I can email them to everybody. I'll email them, yeah. I'll email them to y'all. If I didn't get a chance to do that, I'll do it first thing tomorrow morning. So how do, you, how do we want to yeah. proceed with this now? Because we do have an executive session and someone is here. Um, so, how, how should we do pick this up again? I'd like to at least touch base with it again. Are we meeting again next week? Yeah. No, not until January 9th. Is it still on the... No, we're off. Well, are we, are we comfortable telling still on the, the department heads? Same for the you know, that oh, okay. yeah, I mean, I Those series are level, level funding. So local funding or local services? Excuse me, level, level, ser level service. services. Right. Well, level because service. Because they have pay increases. Yeah. Right. Level services, but did, did we just talk about getting some clerical help in? Is that level servicing or not? Not really. Well, well we're, are we going to try to, we're going to try to do the general government this year, right, for, for this budget. And so, um, 
and then look at like the internship and see if there's a way to backfill that or have Mike look at the budget and see if there's a way to hire a temp. I mean, part of it is I'm always reluctant to, I don't, don't have a doubt that there's a need there. I'm very clear on that. But I'm also reluctant to just build something into a budget without knowing, you know, well, even exactly. Even if we just did a doing. temp, that would be fine. Yeah. I, yeah. Yeah. I mean, there should there be a plan to be for something the body. there. Yeah. yeah. So we can look at that. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We'll take this up again in January. Mm -hmm. And so that's enough, for you, David, for you to give everyone information <laughs> on the budget from us. Uh, enough to get uh, people going. Okay. To okay. get it going. I think that's yeah. the most important thing. Yeah. yeah. Or, uh, right. Are you going to discuss that? Uh, Grant on Moody Bridge and that type, or are you looking right to meeting, or what are you going to do? I can give a quick little. So, Moody Bridge Road is closed uh, because of uh, <coughs> culvert collapsing. Mm -hmm. um, we have three options on the table, which range from zero dollars, which would be closing Moody Bridge Road, uh, all the way up to about probably a half a million dollars to re redo the culvert. Um, with cement uh, three or four sided um, drainage underneath the road. Um, based on some of the conversations, we'd probably be looking at the $60,000 option, which is kind of it, which would reopen uh, Moody Bridge Road. But uh, we had engineers take a look at it, and then we have a conference call tomorrow about the issue. Um, and so it'll come back probably before the board to decide what direction we want to go and how, how we want to spend the money. Um, a few farmers are already complained a little bit because the road is not open and they're trying to access those fields yet. Yeah. There's, there's no. There, houses. there is a lot of traffic there. Yeah. Yeah. There's, there's more traffic than should be. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <coughs> yes and no, but it's a, it's you know, a cut through. We're, we're looking at a lot of grant money to, to take that road off dirt and put it on stone and oil, mm -hmm. with a good base. And it'll be much easier for us to maintain in the end. So, would it be better to do the sixty thousand dollar one? Yeah, that's. I for I would, now until we can get the road up and running. <clears throat> the existing pipes that are in there are uh, galvanized steel mm -hmm. or uh, tarred steel. That back thirty years ago, that's all they had. Mm -hmm. They didn't have the uh, ABS plastic. So the ABS plastic has probably a fifth. They said thirty years, but. Probably has a 50-year, 60-year uh, life expectancy. Mm -hmm. So that's what we just put in on Turner Road. Uh, that last pipe that collapsed. Uh, I think it's a pretty good bang for the buck for the 60 year yeah. to get the road yeah. reopened. And uh, yeah, like you said, it probably lasts 50 years versus the 20. That yeah. So quote. do we have to wait, or can we <coughs> make that decision tonight? Do you want to wait? Well, we're gonna have a conversation tomorrow with Sharon and Billy. Um, just put it pending and let David make the decision. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll bring if I wanted to. Well, we could do a tentative yeah, so that yeah. we don't have to wait till January. Yeah, 9th. if there's no frost, you can go out to bed sure. and get it put in, and it's bigger than, than the highway can so it handles. So I guess the, the key would be the board saying we want to keep Moody Bridge open um, and pursue one of those two options as far as fixing the road because otherwise it would be close it down, block it off, and leave it as it is. So uh, that's, I think, the clarification that we definitely need. Yeah, and I would be concerned that uh, if you think about the southern part of town, there's only two east-west uh, ways of yeah. going across the right. Moody Bridge Road. Is and they just had an accident on South Maple Street, and Amherst had a water break, and it was an mm -hmm. absolute disa disaster yeah. down yeah. there, you know. So why don't we do a tentative uh, motion? Okay. And, uh, I that. can make a motion that we tentatively approve a culvert replacement on Moody Bridge Road mm -hmm. to keep it open. Second that. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Upstate. Okay. Then we can move forward with it without having to do yes. that. Okay. okay. Thank you. Anything else need to be discussed this evening? I have a couple of announcements. I have a couple of announcements. We have lunch with Santa and Mrs. Claus, Saturday, December 15th, from 12 to 2, 
Hadley Elementary School cafeteria. Santa will arrive by fire truck around 12.20 p.m. Uh, touch a fire truck, bring your own camera for pictures with Santa and his elves. Pizza, snacks, dessert, and crafts. Door prizes, drawing starts at 1.30. So they have a list of, uh, you can meet the fire truck that carries Mr. and Mrs. Claus at any of the following times and location. Of, and these are on our website. Website. Okay. And it goes from 9.15 in the morning until 2.20 when he arrives at the school. So we can get out and say hi to Santa as he comes along your street. I hope it's warmer than it was last year. <laughs> That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> uh, we also have Fill the Truck, December 16th, uh, from 10 a.m. to noon at the Hadley Safety Complex, 15 E Street. And it's that time of the year the Hadley Police and Fire Departments will be accepting new and unwrapped toys to fill a cruiser fire truck if you cannot make it on this date. In time, you may drop off toys to our lobby any day and time until December 20th. Toys to be donated to Bay State Children, Hospital, and Shriners Hospital. And you can also bring, if you don't want to bring your toy on Sunday, you can also bring it to the Lunch with Santa that day and uh, bring it to the Hadley Park and Rex and they will stuff a truck for you also. And they're also, they have, um kids of all ages and they're also interested in gift cards as well so for some of the older kids who may not you know enjoy dolls or stuffed animals anymore um, iTunes gift cards and that type of thing are also very well and if you want to donate cash they'll take that as well and they'll convert it to those gift cards <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, we just have a couple of um, obituaries that I wanted to get to. Uh, Mr. Robert Page. Uh, we have Dorothy Salvatore that was a Hadley resident. Um, her son Joe lives in town with his family and her brother Tim O'Hare. Uh, condolences to, to them. And uh, there was also uh, William Zopka uh, Jr. that was Terry Mashensky's uh, nephew that passed away. Also so our condolences to all of these families at this time of the year. Yes, we need to go in executive session. I have one more just oh, announcement. Please. Um, just if you are watching this on uh, the public access uh, cable TV or on YouTube, care about uh, you know the, these meetings being recorded and published on cable or on the internet. And right now, the FCC is looking at changing the way that uh, local access community television has been funded for the past 30 years. Um, there is a comment period that's open until December 14th. If you want, you can call Hadley Media if you want some info. Their number is 584-1203. But I would suggest that the best thing to do is contact um, uh, Jim McGovern's office uh, and our, our senator's office to uh, you know, express your concern about the funding of cable access television because it could go from being funded by the cable subscription service now to having to be funded by the town or eliminated. Who knows what the future is going to be? So um, please take action to, to do something about that. Thank you. And I guess the select board would like to wish everybody a Merry Christmas, a Happy Holiday, and a Happy New Year because we won't see you until yeah. January 9th. Uh, so everybody stay safe and uh, have a good holiday. Yeah. Yeah. <coughs> All right. So can I entertain oh, motion. a motion to go into yeah. executive session, please? Uh, make a motion that we go into executive session in accordance with MGL Chapter 30A, Section 21A1, to discuss the reputation, character, physical condition, or mental health rather than professional competence of an individual, or to discuss the discipline or dismissal of or complaints or charges brought against a public officer, employee, staff member, or individual um, related to the DPW. As Chair of the Hadley Select Board, I state that the Board has moved and second 
And I guess second. Second. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> to enter into executive session and that I state that the discussing the matter in open session will have an adverse effect on the town of Hadley. And we'll ask for a roll call vote, please. Yes. Bill? Yes. 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 Yes.